All right, so I hope you guys liked the last video of the tiger I did. That's the first like proper tiger that I've ever like colored and illustrated like full out. So I'm really happy with it. So um, I'm gonna show you a little technique that I use to do the fur on the tiger. I'm gonna post a link to my brushes in the description below. Get my brushes and you can follow right along on this tutorial. And um, yeah, let's make some tiger fur. So I'm gonna take Graffiti One brush put some white in there kind of like it's the, the side of his face and let's see something like that There you go, a little something like that. All right, so we just have some shapes there. And essentially what we wanna do is take the smudge, graffiti one, and you're just gonna tease this out. It's really not complicated. big strokes and you just take it and and uh, let's see which direction do I want the fur to go you know I'll make it all go in, in one direction how about that so all I'm doing is making big arcs not too much pressure during the whole thing but a little a little more pressure to begin with and then just trailing off you know just like you would if you're drawing something with pencil or, or sh shading or rendering something with pencil so just just long strokes that sounds weird All right. You can experiment with different brushes. I usually like like this brush. So for the black here, you just do the same thing. And it depends on how how far out you want this black to go. You can experiment. You make the brush a little smaller. And make sure you move the cameras, do whatever is more comfortable for you. And you can go backwards on it too. Go forward some, go back to really like, you know, even it out. You can lower the opacity too. If you find that it's being too, that it's too sharp, that they're too sharp, just lower the opacity for the smudge. And if they come out too far, you just go the opposite way. And just kind of like, basically what you want to do is you want to blunt these like edges, these sharp edges. So you might have to just go back and forth. I'm gonna lower the opacity way down. So I lowered the opacity way down so it's not as strong. And then I'm just 
you know, still doing the same thing, just teasing them out, but since I lowered the opacity, they're just not as, uh, they're not as stiff. And I'm just going in one direction for this. Nothing too fancy, just takes a long time. I'm going to raise the opacity a little bit. So it's, so it's a little darker. Raise it a little bit more. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we're going to take this orange and do the same thing with it. So that's all I'm doing is just going like this, go back on some. And then when I go back, I'm using a little less pressure because these are be it's, it's being very dark. Make the brush a little bigger. Yeah, that helps a lot. The brush was a little small. And see how I keep going back and forth. Like I go one direction and then the other one, and then the other way. You just want everything to be nice and blended. As you can see, it takes a long time, but that's okay. And you can see it kind of starting to look like fur. these little bits, same thing, but I'm going to show you something different. We're going to take the ink in brush and we are going to lower the opacity of that. So this is with the ink in brush on smudge again. And we're just going to do, just going to tease these little guys up with this brush. So this, if you, if you, this is a little more streamlined. It's the same movement, but it's a little crisper. The hairs are a little crisper. So if you want to stay in the shape and you don't want to deviate from the shape too much, then you can do it this way as well. And also if you're doing stripes like by the tiger's eyes or things like that, where it's very intricate, you can use, you can use the pen because it's a little smaller. This is good for really big, big edges. And all I'm doing is just running back and forth. And even for this white fur here, even though it's a little patch, I'm going to add it so everything gets smoothed out. Just make a little, you know, you can just do little designs. When you want the fur to change direction, you just do it in an arc. it to be all going the one direction so I'll just go over that come back on it all right, I'm gonna switch back to the other brush because it's a little faster I'm 
but you can also experiment with other brushes. Pretty much it. And you would just continue to do this the whole way. As much as you needed to do. And you can, if you want to make some of these longer. You just stick to the direction, whatever the direction the fur behind it is going. You just stick to that direction. So all I'm doing is making just, you know, long, long strokes. You can add a little, little ones that are longer just to kind of to kind of shake it up. You don't want it to be too uniform. And now you can take the soft brush and if you really want to fluff them up you can just take the soft brush and really lightly really lightly go along the edge. Gives it that like nice fluffy, fluffy look. You can do that with these two, but sometimes it's nice to keep them, uh, keep them as they are. And that's pretty much how you do it. If you don't like something, like if you think it's too bushy there, you can take the same brush, we'll take Graffiti One, make it pretty small, and you can, oops, what do I wanna do here? Not erase, you can take the, um, well you can do erase, but you don't wanna do it with the brush. If you're gonna, if you're gonna erase Maybe use the Inkin or a Sketch Master. I'd probably do Sketch Master if I'm going to erase. And just lightly come back on it. And just still going in that same direction. Just to kind of break it up a little bit. That looks really nice. If you need to do highlights, you can just take this color, lighten it up some, and then I would probably do it with yeah, Sketch Master. You can probably do it with Sketch Master. I'd make the brush small, and then I would just do and just do little lines wherever it's. Wherever you want the highlights to be. And you just keep going over it. With... And that'll really sell it as hair. You know, once you have those highlights. Things like that. And then if you want to do whiskers, can take ink in and let's say the whiskers are coming from here you can just do whiskers that come out like that and 
once you have the sketch of your of your tiger and you make all the colors it'll look like this is what mine looked like to begin with so this was my sketch this was my sketch of a tiger and then I added the orange and then I added the white and so this face became this face and it's all the same technique when I zoom in you can see how kind of erratic it is same technique it's just over and over and over and over again highlights so just just time just took a long time but that's pretty much how you make tiger fur all right so i hope you guys found that useful uh if so drop me drop me a comment i'd love to see like what you do i'd love to see if you are experimenting with some fur uh just keep doing it keep going and um this is a terrible outro. Let's make some tiger fur. Super cringy. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs>